racism in the world today in your own life and out there. And hey, Jose, what's <laughs> going on in your life? <laughs> you know, uh, it's actually, that was a really powerful story uh, with Peter Norman. I, I recall a couple of years ago is when they talked about the Ab- Aborigine folks in Australia and how you know, they were looking for reparations. I think the government, right. you know, decided to do reparations for them. So that that was a pretty powerful uh, story. And, you know, I think it goes to the beginning conversation about fear. You know, if Absolutely. fear didn't have fear, you know, that, that uh, couldn't have started uh, maybe a movement. Uh, because I know Australia is becoming a, a you know, more medium uh, politically wise and, and more open. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, that's that's fantastic. But you know, a, as far as uh, for me, I, I think you know not only uh, seeing what's what's been happening in the news and and you know kind of digesting that and taking in uh, you know what is happening with refugees and what is happening with the displacement of folks. You know, uh, you know we have to I think look back into our own history. You know, to see how we handled these things, because this has been happening to the United States, I think, for centuries, right? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I always um, sometimes, you know, and this is something that my coach talks to me about, my vocal coach, uh, Jerry Hasley. Uh, he talks about how, you know, sometimes we're so, uh, you know, enthralled and and thinking about the next new thing, the right. next new idea. Right. The next new, you know, how are we going to conquer a new situation or uh, some method? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, his thought is there really isn't many two new ideas anymore. Mm-hmm. And, may, of course, technology, of course, is booming. There's, right, that's right. There in and that that's sector, true. That's a little different. But we're talking about philo- philosophical, right, in regards to the world, immigration, life. How uh, we treat each that's other. That's right. You know, these things have... All the ideas have been already brought up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, I think, you know, that's something that uh, has helped me in regards to my study of an opera, of opera. You know, it it, uh, it is the study of history, of music history, mm-hmm. um, that allows me to think of what these folks went through, right? To, uh, you know, sing in those operas at those times, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, that I, I kind of use in my study, in my vocal uh, study is, you know, the, at the end of the day, opera is the, the, the study of voice. And every new, there is no new idea in that. Absolutely. It's already it's, been brought up. It's already been thought of. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I find myself always trying to position my voice or my mouth in certain ways. And my coach goes, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> no, you, you're not. It's not going to work out. There's no new way to position your voice. There's no new way. It's already been thought of, and you need to start doing <laughs> what what we're practicing. Right. Right. So I kind of think about that, and um, you know, I I always just you know that's the way my mindset works in the in the way I do business, um, in the way I handle my personal life. You know, I always look to find mentors. I always look for folks who have been here longer than me. Mm-hmm. And learn from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, I well, think thank you. I'm glad you're hanging out with me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, that, you know, I, I think especially it's helped me in the last couple of years. And, and folks don't know, I've been uh, take, doing a tour of the state of Washington um, with my program called Encanto. And, and, Tell the people yeah. a little bit what that means, because I've heard your voice and I love it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Encanto was um, thought up about two years ago in this you know this this planning of t- touring right of doing this tour to the state of Washington to get folks to know who I am and hear my voice so I reached back in my own background you know being uh, Latino uh, raised by uh, Mexican uh, parents you know who who immigrated to this country in the 60s and 70s uh, you know, we obviously had a culture, uh, a Mexican culture, you know, for music, um, right. other customs. So when I thought about this program, that's what I reached back, you know, not only from the last seven years of opera study, but also my childhood. And I said, you know, how do I combine 
mm-hmm. uh, these genres from using mariachi bolero and opera aria in one concert. Which is a, is a stretch. It, yes, it is. It's a stretch. It, yeah, it is. Um, and so in thinking that, that's what Encanto is. Encanto um, is the merge of opera aria, classical piano, and mariachi bolero all in one concert. Wow. So in that, I one of my goals really in the concert is not only to, you know, have folks hear my voice and, and hear that I can uh, change it from bolero to opera style, but also really to bring cultures together. Yes. You know, yes. Um, I've, you know, especially uh, when I was doing my concerts in Spokane and Pasco and, uh, you know, Richland and Ellensburg, Wenatchee. I'm going to, you know, in, in all fairness, you know, in the beginning, um, it was interesting. I had uh, I had actually more uh, Anglo folks. Really? Yeah. And that's attend- a very r- rich area. Of, yeah. <laughs> that's right. right. And they did it because I, I think they were in, they were themselves interested right. into going, you know, this guy's trying to mix two things. But as I, um, you know, and I understand that because... Um, more education, uh, yes. you know, folks are e- more eager to try new things, right? Correct. I mean, and so I, I understood that. And then I knew, I was like, okay, my goal now is to bring where I grew up, people around, you know, uh, Mexican-Americans, you know, to let them introduce them to opera. Right. And let, and r- let them realize that um, they can appreciate this. Uh, and obviously um, they do because a lot of the concepts – of the concert and a lot of the music has been through my travels in Mexico City and Guadalajara. Is that uh, where your family originated? Well, my my family's from Michoacan. Mich- Michoacan. Oh, I love yeah. Michoacan. It's yeah. one of my favorite places. Is it? Oh, that's yeah, great. that's yeah. great. So, but Oaxaca is, too. I Oaxaca, like Oaxaca. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, at the end, I I what I did was I said, okay, um, I'm hearing uh, bolero being done in classical piano. In mm-hmm. these cities, and obviously we're talking about Guadalajara, Mexico City. These are the highest educated areas in the country. Yes. Uh, unbelievable uh, collegiate universities there, mm-hmm. uh, internationally known. So, you know, I I then said, why, why can't I try to bring it to maybe other uh, Latinos that didn't get the opportunity to uh, go to college? Because mm-hmm. um, there is a lot, especially here in in the state of Washington, and that's just because of you know immigration or you know in regards to work and the need to um, work and and provide uh, for their families. You know, I think that sometimes is taking precedence um, first um, than education. And so one of my goals, you know, really with this program is to not only bring people together but let them know that there are so many similarities. Uh, yes, yeah, with, definitely. With the music, um, you know, for example, uh, some of the boleros that folks will listen. You know, they were they were uh, composed in 1920 in Mexico, 1930. Well, they're going to have similar rhythms, uh, similar exactly, sounds exactly. as the music that uh, in the 1920s and 1930s that was being composed here in the United States. Right, because that, there's something energetically That's that right. does happen throughout. You know, the planet. It, you you the got species. it. You got yeah. it. And, you know, I look at this as well. When, you know, if you we're talking about 1920s, 1930s, and uh-huh. folks who are highly educated, composers, you know, professors, well, they just naturally are going to want to see what other professors and other composers are doing <laughs> in the world, right? Exactly. And so, you know, that is the beauty, I think, of music, really. Uh, it really can combine different cultures uh, different, even ideology, mm-hmm. um, to to enjoy uh, music, and so that was a bit of the th- the thought, and and that I believe that I can use my background of, you know, being born in the United States, um, and you know, speaking Spanish as well. Uh, grew up in in a speaking Spanish. Do you speak household. other languages besides? You know, English I I can. I don't. I, I can understand Italian. Yeah, um, it's, it's similar. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, mm-hmm. And I can read Italian, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things that I said to myself, it, 
took me to mature myself to be able to do what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I look back my late 20s, you know, early 30s, and to see if I could do this. And I know that I have not been able to. And that is because it did take a maturity of who I am. Absolutely. Where I'm Absolutely. living and we, we, who's we, around we, me. We, we praise youth so much. And, I, and youth is good. Yeah. But you, you've got to be able to have a certain amount of life experience to be able to bring things together to be able to see the bigger picture. Because even though you can be very creative when you're young, it's a very inward kind of place that it comes from. And as you get, you know, more life experience, you know how to draw from a exactly. whole number of places to weave things together. No, I, you you hit that right on uh, why I believe this is the right time. Oh, it is. For me. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things, too, is maturity brings so much um, fearlessness. <laughs> And back to That's not right. being afraid. It, it really exactly. does. Uh, not only uh, having no fear to befriend anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that's what helps me uh, when I'm just out there in the public. Or, and if, you know, sometimes I'm now starting to do keynote sp- speeches. It is because I believe that I've been able to cross, live cross-culturally mm-hmm. and have empathy for a wide variety of people. Um, and that's something that, you know, I have to thank my family, to be honest with you. My older brothers and sisters have molded me, you know, to... Well, where are you in the pecking order <laughs> of those 11 siblings? Yeah, I'm I'm the seventh. <laughs> wow, the seventh so, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the seventh son. I have three older sisters. Um, and, uh, you know, they've just been uh, remarkable. They really have. Uh, not only of keeping me very uh, conscious in the world, you know, conscious about my surroundings, about my actions. You know, there are consequences to not only my immediate family, but my community. Um, And, uh, you know, that is something that I will always be grateful of, to be honest with you, is to have the family that I have. Um, Yes, you know, they strive for excellence. You know, um, I think they, they needed to, especially coming from from Mexico, my older siblings came from Mexico. You know, they had to, you know, not know English, uh, and get into college and graduate. I know it's amazing. Yeah, and so well, we should do a thing about yeah. your life story at some point too. <laughs> I want to make sure before we run out of time too that we talk about this event a week sure. from tomorrow because uh, I know that uh, Eastern Washington University President uh, Dr. Mary Cullinan uh, is going to be at Ben Royal Hall. Uh, and that at seven o'clock is your concert. You're in Cantado, and, right. and um, uh, but that there's also um, there's going to be a, a cocktail party, I believe, at uh, at six. Six, yep. and and so they can just go to the Ben Royal Hall box office to purchase tickets. There's still tickets available. There is uh, all the VIP sections are sold out though. Right. Um, they're it's starting to uh, quite a bit of tickets are, are getting sold. So you know, please if if you're interested Sooner in this than blend, later. yeah. If yeah. you're interested in this blend, and it's such a family uh, oriented and just a way to spend some time, uh, yeah. Because if you already haven't done t- gotten tickets for this and you want something special over the holiday weekend, uh, yes. this is de- and it's a good cause because I know the money's gone for scholarships at uh, Eastern Washington University. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, that's something of the aspect of what I've been doing with music. You know, I've raised over $100,000 for uh, student scholarships, um, and it's been really cool to be able to do that. Um, and with that, I've our family has been able to establish two endowments, one at Eastern Washington University and one at Central Washington University, um, you know, to help kids who, who live like us, you know, and want to get an education. And I know that there's an opportunity to win a cruise for two to either Norway or the Mediterranean, which I think is great. And and who's the the uh, you've got somebody very special uh, emceeing this program? Yes, Enrique too. Serna. Uh, he's a you know TV personality, very well KCTS. Known. Yeah. Yes, and you know he does so much for the community. 
Um, and so when he told me he would MC, I was that ecstatic. Was great. You yeah. know, I was ecstatic. I, I just jumped because, you know, though it's some of the, the folks that you really want to look up to, you know, in the community who just mean the best for everyone. Uh, so I'm just very excited for this event and, and just the auction items. I mean, you know, to do a cruise to the Mediterranean for two, you, you know, you're gonna, it's going to be remarkable to be able to do that. And Norway, of all people. So Hurt and Gurten Cruises, anybody's a Norwegian out there. You know, they're, yeah, or they're if they want to know, know more about another culture, that would be right. great. You bet. Well, yeah. we're almost out of time. Okay. And um, w- I wanted to thank you again for honoring me with your presence today. Uh, I'll honor you with mine tomorrow. (laughs) Uh, Now we're both going to work on Asylum, which is another project uh, that both of us support. Uh, Folks, if you haven't gotten the tickets, call Ben Royal Hall. This is November 28th, 7 p.m. The cocktail party starts at 6 in the atrium. And this is a it's a really good event. Uh, You're going to learn a lot about music, but you're also going to help people with scholarships at Eastern Washington. So um, it has been a delightful Thank day. You. I, I have, I'm going to have you back. I want to hear. I want you to do more singing. But until then, we want everyone out there to keep on dancing. All right. <laughs>